Hello friends, I am Jagannath. I am going to discuss a topic in anthropology, in physical anthropology, comparative anatomy of man and apes. So, uh, before starting this topic uh, known as this comparative anatomy of man and apes, uh, I like to tell you before starting this topic uh, that uh, to understand the classification of uh, primates or hominids, you require essential uh, basic knowledge uh, before understanding this. So, what is the basic essential uh, data or knowledge or vocabulary you need to know for easy understanding of these two chapters regarding the classification of uh, primates uh, or how many it's you have got. So, uh, I am going to uh, discuss or give you the information essential uh, uh, to you before discussing this topic so that these uh, uh, two chapters becomes very easy for you. So, the crux lies here in uh, where the biological jargon being used in these uh, uh, couple of chapters. Uh, is based upon the anatomy, especially uh, especially the bones of the skeleton of uh, skeleton of uh, the primates. One fact we need to know is uh, whether it is uh, a great ape or whether it is a world world monkey or whether it is uh, a uh, the new world or uh, the prosimians or the man all of these organisms have the same set of bones named by the same names then what is the difference when they have been given the same names the difference is in the process of evolution uh, uh, there is transformation uh, where the same bones have become much more complex with the change in time and complexity so, in this process of comparison, whether when you are comparing a chimpanzee with a human being or when you are comparing an old world monkey with a gorilla or a gorilla with a, a human being, you are using the vocabulary of the same bones where all the animals have the same names. That Keep this in mind when you are able to know the names of this set of bones and keeping in mind that all these animals have the bones which have got the same names but the structure varies where this structural variation has been the structural variation has been happened because of the process of adaptation in the process of evolution you need to keep this in mind before getting into the topic so before uh, before getting into the topic i like to show you the kind of bones which are used for the comparison of uh, man and apes. When you are clear with the set of bones, the anatomy, a simple anatomy, uh, essential to anthropology, keep this in mind. Anatomy here, uh, don't get frightened uh, as far as the word anatomy is considered, especially the non-science students. Whether science or non-science student, forget about yourself, the qualification you have got. We need a minimum vocabulary of anatomy when you are able to memorize this and know where these bones are actually you are done with this concept not only with this concept with these couple of chapters of primate classification and evolution of man both these chapters are can be made very simple when you are able to memorize the words uh, memorize the vocabulary of uh, anatomy in terms of the names of the bones uh, uh, where I am about to discuss with you right now. So before discussing, I like to introduce this concept. Anatomy is the branch of science concerned with the bodily structure of humans, animals and other living organisms, especially the internal structure as re <coughs> revealed by dissection so knowing the internal shapes of the body by cutting the body and knowing what internally is the study of uh, anatomy is so 
what are you doing in this process of comparison you are comparing one primate with another in this cons in this topic we are comparing man with great apes why we are comparing it what what do you know in this process of comparison is a question to you in the anthropological context comparative anatomy is the anatomical comparison of man and the remaining primates this helps in finding the similarities and differences between primates so what is happening why you are doing it so what you are gaining from this process of comparison in this process of comparison you will be able to know the similarities and differences how you have been evolved in this process of similarities if you are able to find certain similarities with certain animals in the geological past what happens is with the help of archaeology when you are able to compare the anatomical similarities and differences if you are similar it is a relative animal to you if they are dissimilar they are farther away in the phylogeny of uh, the radiation of evolution so simply you will be able to know how far they are similar how far they are different from you so in this process of uh, evolution um this is how evolution has been happened since millions of years so around uh, 50 million years or so uh, this is the kind of uh, uh, monkey kind of organism uh, which has been evolved from uh, the prosimians these lemurs are considered as the tarsiers the lemurs are considered as prosimians from prosimians these monkeys have been evolved from these monkeys uh, great, uh, great apes have been evolved so from these monkeys from a variant of monkey human being have been evolved so this is how the sequence of evolution has been happened in the case of uh, primates so on the basis of similarities and differences we can trace the relationship between organisms in the phylogeny in the evolutionary history so the the the, the duration happened in the past is the history of evolution a phylogeny is studying the relationship between uh, different organisms which have been evolved from the same ancestors which help you to know the degree of relationships between uh, organisms so that is that is what a phylogeny is on the basis of similarities and differences similar is the anatomy closer the relation and dissimilar dissimilarity represents farther in phylogeny relation so here in this process for example uh, you are classifying organisms on the basis of uh, the similarities and differences so when the organisms have got similar characteristic features they have been grouped under a a similar class for example mammals so what are the animals which are considered as mammals the basic uh, characteristic features of mammals is having body hair is a characteristic feature or uh, feeding the young with the milk is a characteristic feature of mammal mammals giving birth to the young without laying eggs is a characteristic feature of uh, mammals maintaining constant body temperature is a characteristic feature of mammals so on this basis further the similar for example primates are part of a, a class mammalia where these unique uh, uh, group of living beings known as primates have got their own similarities in terms of uh, their body stature anatomy brain fore limbs hind limbs uh, all these characteristic features when they are being uh, compared when they are similar so they are relative to you so when an animal or a living being doesn't have hair he is not a mammal for example birds instead of uh, having a, a hair they have got feathers so because it has got feathers doesn't have hair it is not a mammal it is a bird with uh, feathers and beak 
so each class have their own basic uh, characteristic uh, features so that is the main advantage with this so the degree of relationship sequence of evolution and the degree of evolutionary radiation can be established so what do you mean by this in this context is a uh, sequence of evolution on the basis of similarities and differences it is assumed that life has been originated in a aquatic environment especially a marine environment as an unicellular organisms from these unicellular organisms depending upon the environmental conditions and adapting capability of these organisms or unicellular organisms gradually evolved into different kinds of diversified flora and fauna so from a single organism different class of living beings different phylum of living beings have been evolved and radiated into different living organisms for example plants and animals both are living organisms so here evolution sequence of evolution so from uh, a unicellular organism like an amoeba some uh, cnidarians might have been evolved or from cnidarians some other complex organisms might have been evolved like fishes from fishes amphibians from amphibians uh, you have got uh, different kinds of organisms like uh, or reptiles or birds in this way the, there is a further deviation and complexity and differences existed with the process of adaptation in this process there is a sequence there is increasing diversity and complexity in this process of radiation of evolution based upon the common characteristic features you can group certain organisms as a similar class when they are different into different organisms so based upon this evolutionary radiation classifying on the basis of similarities and differences you can establish the degree of relationship between uh, organisms so that is the reason why comparative anatomy helps in finding the degree of relationships between organisms so uh, this helps in understanding our past from where we are and we will we can easily reconstruct what we are physically and how we have been evolved from a primitive simpler organisms to the complex homo sapiens so after knowing uh, uh, what is comparative anatomy and the importance uh, of comparative anatomy uh, after introducing the names of different bones of uh, a man uh i will get into the topic because i i will be using these different kinds of uh, vocabulary uh, which belongs to anatomy or biology whatever it is so these are for example uh the bones of the skull of a human being uh these are the different kinds of bones for example uh the different uh, bones for example this part uh, is known as cranium the whole the whole set of these bones which i am showing by marker is known as cranium cranium is otherwise also known as the brain box where it these these bones articulating together have a cavity inside which lodges the brain so this bony box is known as cranium so here in this uh, in this this cranium is articulated by different kinds of bones so what are the bones uh, with which uh, this cranium is made up of so this cranium is made up of so for example in the front region this is known as a, a frontal so this bone is part of a, a cranium so the bones side on the either side of the skull is known as these parietal uh, bones the bone at the back of the skull is known as occipital bones so uh, these uh, temporal bone is on the side temporal bone is the one which is on the side 
parietals are not on the side parietals are on the top of the head uh, or parietal bones we have uh, two parietal bones on the either side of the head at the top the frontal the occiput and these are the main bones where you need to memorize uh, <clears throat> in the case of the skull and in the case of the facial bones the main bones which you need to uh, memorize is the one the lower jaw is known as the mandible and the upper jaw is known as uh, the maxilla so just uh, the bones of the skull right now which i have specified uh, you need to memorize to understand the upcoming discussion and even the the two chapters in the evolution especially the primates and uh, the other hominids this you need to memorize in the case of the skull next the bones in the hand which you need to memorize is uh, for our uh, comparative anatomy and for anthropological purpose for civil services this humerus bone in the hand the upper arm otherwise also known as the forearm has got two bones radius and ulna and the hand consists of these three sets of bones known as carpals otherwise also known as wrist bones metacarpals hand bones and phalanges finger bones so these are the bones which we need to keep in mind to understand the upcoming discussion this is known as the sternum the common name of the sternum is breast bone the clavicle is known as the collar bone and this is known as a, uh, the vertebral column so don't get confused with the vertebral column and spinal cord spinal cord is part of brain or, or is part of nervous system spinal cord is the extension of brain into the vertebral column vertebral column protects the spinal cord vertebral column is part of skeleton system whereas spinal cord is part of a, a nervous system so that you need to little bit clear clear which is also useful to you in general studies so this is known as a, the backbone in general terms uh, as far as the biological terms it is known as a, uh vertebral column and this is made up of uh, 33 number of vertebrae in the case of uh, human beings the different uh, the vertebrae at different regions from the neck to the tail at the bottom uh, is been classified depending upon their location so the neck region vertebrae are known as cervical and the thoracic region vertebrae are known as thoracic vertebra near the chest region a lumbar vertebra at the lower back region and at the base uh, at the lowest base is a sacrum so this is how these 33 vertebra are been uh, are been described and this coccyx extends into tail in the case of other tail bearing animals so this difference we need to know the first vertebra is known as atlas and the second one is known as axis this is also useful to us in general studies this one you need to keep in mind and uh, as far as our uh, vertebral column is considered uh, it is not straight it has got an s shaped structure it's uh, with certain convexities and concavities so <clears throat> this is otherwise also known as a pelvic girdle this uh, specifically deliberately i have uh, i have projected this uh, a pelvic girdle to you which is of uh, different colors because this is a, a bony structure which is the resultant of the fusion of three different bones these three different bones are on the either half of this uh, uh, pelvic girdle is ilium ischium and pubis are actually fused into a single bone but this is a picture which has differentiated these fused bones into three different bones with coloration and this is the uh, last part of this uh, vertebral column in the previous uh, uh, diagram which i have shown to you the sacrum 
the sacrum fits into into this uh, pelvic girdle uh, and this provides a very good uh, uh, strength uh, for bearing the weight uh, this is one of the signi main significance of this uh, part of uh, skeleton in human body so in this pelvic girdle we need to remember these three uh, three bone names ilium ischium and pubis in the case of these uh, lower limbs the femur the strongest and the longest bone in the human body the patella the kneecap and the lower part of the leg consists of two bones so tibia and fibula so uh, these bones you need to be familiar with uh, names you need to be familiar with the names and their location so in the case of these foot uh, uh, you need to uh, you need to memorize certain bones names for example you have got this uh, calcareous or talus so here uh, to memorize this very easily you need not to memorize all the names of these uh, all the names being projected to you so uh, in the case of the hand for in the case of comparison between hand and foot for example um, the wrist bones are known as carpals in the case of uh, <clears throat> the leg the heel bones are known as tarsals carpals metacarpals in the case of the hand tarsals metatarsals these are metatarsals in the case of foot and phalanges so this is how you need to metatarsal bones so these set of bones are known as metatarsals these set of bones are known as tarsals metatarsals and phalanges so this is how you need to memorize the names of these bones if you are clear and after memorizing these bones these couple of chapters will be very clear to you because you will be just comparing the uh, carpals and metacarpals of uh, human being and carpals of uh, uh, great apes then it will be very easy to understand what are you talking about So in this process, now I am going to start uh, the process of comparison between uh, great apes and uh, man. So first we shall start uh, with head and we shall go from head to toe in this process of comparison. The skull present many contrasting features between man and ape. So there are many kind of differences. So what kind of differences do we have got uh, in, the, in the case of anatomical variations between the great apes and uh, man? The skull of the man is highly developed in the frontal region. So the forehead extends almost vertical upward direction. This is one of the main feature in the case of uh, comparative anatomy in the case of skull. So what is he talking about? Let, let us see, that. see. See this. This is the skull of an ape and this is the skull of a human being. So he is talking about this region. This is the forehead region. The forehead is moving uh, vertically upwards whereas uh, the forehead is uh, receding backwards the vertical extension is absent in the case of uh, great apes but the forehead is prominent in the case of uh, human skull that is one of the basic fundamental anatomical variation between the skull of uh, the skull of uh, man and uh, great apes so when there is a comparison in uh, pro <coughs> proportion of facial bones and cranial bones in this case what is happening here is 
these are the bones for example this is the skull and this part above is the cranium the brain box when the size of the brain box is considered here when you relatively compare the size of the cranium of uh, the ape and uh, the man the proportionate size of the cranium is more than great apes that is one of the fundamental difference the proportionate facial bones are considered especially the mandible and the maxilla see this so the mandible is very massive in the case of apes the mandible is not so massive in the case of a uh, uh, man so and the maxilla is protruding forward this this anatomical condition of protrusion of uh, uh, maxilla and mandible forward uh, is known as prognathism so the prognathism is present in the case of apes such a kind of prognathism is very minimal and in certain races the prognathism is absent that is one of the fundamental difference and the other fundamental difference here is this ridge above the eyes is present predominantly in the case of uh, apes this kind of uh, supra orbital ridge this ridge is known as supra orbital ridge orbit is this round socket which is lodging the eyeball is the orbit here supra orbital means above the orbit you have a ridge that is the reason why it is known as supra orbital ridge so this supra orbital ridge is prominent in the case of apes such kind of supra orbital ridge is absent in the case of uh, human skull the supra orbital ridge is an extraordinary protection to the eyeballs uh, where we have lost uh, at the cost of uh, development of frontal lobe where the frontal lobe is very minimal in the case of uh, apes in the case of the brain i will tell you what frontal lobe is in the case of brain in the upcoming discussion so the frontal lobe of the brain inside the skull is less in the case of apes this <clears throat> ascent of forehead vertically in the case of uh, in the case of human beings has facilitated a cavity inside for a better development of frontal lobe of the brain which has got a very good logical capability thinking capacity memory etc so <clears throat> that is one of the main advantage but this advantage has developed at the cost of uh, uh, strength of the supra orbital uh, ridge and as <clears throat> a very striking uh, <clears throat> difference is the teeth here the canines are are extending even into the other jaw which is absent here in the case of uh, in the case of uh, human skull so this having a large canine extending more than the level of the tooth in the jaw uh, is another features of the another feature differentiating the anatomy when you relatively compare with the uh, human teeth <clears throat> the, so <clears throat> for the time being as far as this uh, projection is considered these are some of the fundamental differences in the skull which we can uh, make it out so <clears throat> and uh, <clears throat> this projection also <clears throat> shows the same thing <clears throat> other fundamental difference we have got uh, which has been projected here in the great apes is large sagittal crest so there is a rising ridge medially means at the center of the skull at the top of the head there is a, a strong ridge running uh, across the length of the skull in the case of apes which is known as a uh, uh, sagittal crest sagittal crest is prominent in apes and sagittal crest is absent in the case of uh, human beings and <clears throat> as i have as i have already mentioned that mandible is very thick uh, in the case of uh, apes so this is uh, a mandible of an uh, ape which is very thick 
when you relatively compare with the jaw of a human being this mandible is not as thick as uh, the apes the main reason behind it is uh, in this process in this process of evolution uh, when we have started cooking food with the help of fire <clears throat> the process of digestion has started breaking down of the food has started outside your body so it became very simple for your digestive system to digest that is the reason why it is not only the size of the mandible bone the muscles supporting the mandible have also decreased and the size of the tooth has also been uh, decreased in terms of size and strength the mandible has decreased uh, the the main reason behind it is uh, um, the food we eat especially these apes uh, which eat the raw food directly uh, which is available in the nature which is hard to digest need to mash the food very softly so that the process of digestion becomes very easy but in the case of human beings when we have started uh, controlling fire we have started um, cooking food the necessity to chew gradually decreased and further right now we have started consuming burgers pastries ice creams etc and in future because you can just squeeze some paste inside your mouth then the necessity of the mandible or the jaws or the tooth decreases and it may disappear in future so the supraorbital ridge is not so developed in the case of uh, uh, in the case of uh, uh, human skull see this the supraorbital ridge is not well developed the supraorbital ridge is well developed in the case of apes no sagittal crest is present in the skull so humans doesn't have a sagittal crest where apes have the maxilla and premaxilla have been fused so here the maxilla and premaxilla have been fused now you know what a maxilla is but the front part of the maxilla is known as premaxilla the premaxilla and the maxilla are being fused so the maxilla and premaxilla have been fused in the case of human beings so the, the this is the red marked structure is premaxilla and when these two bones have been fused into a single structure in the case of uh, human beings is an anatomical feature or a difference <clears throat> next one is foramen magnum is situated at the center of the skull so what do you mean by this another general studies point here which we need to know here is the largest hole in the human body is uh, this foramen magnum magnum means the largest foramen means the hole so where do we have this hole how this position of this hole varied with evolution is a point so so this is what is known as the foramen magna this is the base of the skull this is the hole through which the brain extends into the vertebral column as a spinal cord so this hole is known as a foramen magna so what is the position of the foramen magna when you relatively compare with the man and apes so this is centrally located so that the head can vertically uh, rest on the vertebral column but in the case of uh, apes this is not so centrally located in the case of uh, human beings so here this is how apes and human being uh, skulls are been compared this green patch is the foramen magna or a hole which facilitates the passage of uh, spinal cord into the vertebral column from the brain so see this in the case of apes it is posteriorly located in the case of humans this foramen magnum is uh, uh, located anteriorly because of which uh, the position of the head varies our head is upright and the apes head is more or less in a hanging direction because the point where uh, the head is been attached to the body depends upon the location of foramen magna so this is how it is being depicted see this so this is at the center vertical this is at the posterior side because of which 
the head is hanging so the the shape of the head or the direction in which the face is being projected is being determined by the location of a foramen magna anterior in the case of humans posterior in the case of apes is one of the fundamental difference in the anatomy in apes the forehead is less developed and head slopes backward so so here as i have already discussed with you forehead is sloping and the uh, and it is not rising that is what he is saying the supra orbital ridge is highly developed which i have already explained to you sagittal crest is present in the skull foramen magnum is seen uh, further back backward uh, at the base of the skull it is for this reason that the face of an ape hangs downwards so this is how you need to present while comparing the anatomy in terms of the foramen magna uh, which is the largest hole in the human body next is mandible in the case of man the lower jaw in man is small in size in comparison to that of apes which we have discussed the muscle responsible for the movement of the lower jaw is weak in the case of man because the size of the mandible is less and the kind of food which we are eating is cooked food because of which automatically in the process of evolution the size of uh, the mandible has decreased in man there is always a well developed chin so we have a chin here uh, which is not a present in the case of uh, apes so see this see this picture you will be able to know here the chin is absent here but here the chin is well developed in the case of man so this is one of the fundamental difference existence of chin in the man absence of chin in the ape is one of the fundamental difference in terms of uh, anatomy uh prognathism is absent so prognathism as i have already explained the extension of maxilla and uh, protrusion of maxilla and mandible is minimum or absent in the case of a uh, man but uh, is present in the case of apes apes lower jaw is massive there is no trace of chin uh muscles for movement of lower jaw are strong in the case of apes so you might have observed this the massive mandible proportionately to the mandible variation proportionate muscle variation also exists apes have very tough muscles whereas human beings have less muscle being attached to the mandible facial prognathism is very common among apes next in the case of brain when you relatively compare here the size of the brain in the case of uh, these primates especially in the case of homo sapiens uh, the size of the brain is the highest uh, in the relatively when you relatively compare with these uh, primates so uh, so here this is how the comparison of the size of the uh, size of the brain of a different uh, great apes when you relatively compare the size of the human being brain is much more larger than chimpanzee gorilla orangutan gibbon or uh, these macaques or monkeys so what does this emphasizes predominantly the cerebral uh, cortex which has got uh, uh, to do with uh, storing high uh, storing a uh, um, huge memory logic thinking decision making is uh, as the main uh, uh the main uh, function of these uh, cerebral uh, hemisphere especially in the cortex region so with this diagram or this projection you will be able to uh, well differentiate that uh, the the size of the brain of human beings when you relatively compare with the great apes is very large uh, and a well established cerebral uh, cortex which has got all these uh, functions which i have got mentioned with you 
this is one of the fundamental difference so to accommodate this largest brain the cranial the cranial or the brain box volume has been increased at the cost of the strength of this uh, cranial strength uh, the capability of the brain performance has increased which has which has given us a lot of advantage to command the world when you relatively compare with the rest of the living beings so uh, this is how because of this variation of this uh, cranial capacity the volume this is how it varies in the case of uh, great apes uh, it is around 400 cc or sometimes in the lesser it is even around 150 200 cc in the case of human beings in the homo sapiens the cranial capacity is more than four 1400 cc it can sometimes it can even extend to 1600 cc also so this is one of the uh, difference in terms of uh, the capacity or the volume the cubic uh, centimeter cc means cubic centimeters of volume facilitated inside the cranium because of the enlargement facilitated the development of a very complex brain And it is so complex that uh, it has got a very unique tissue when you relatively compare with any kind of organisms, which has been mentioned here, known as Broca's area and Wernicke's area. This Broca's area and Wernicke's area, which is lacking in the rest of the organisms, where which is responsible for speech, listening, analyze, analyzing the uh, sounds, etc., and the language, is got, got with this uh, tissue in the brain known as Broca's area and Vernix area. So this is the uh, region where this tissue is specifically existing in the brain. Vernix and Broca's area. Broca's area is involved in the production of uh, coherent speech. So this Broca's area is responsible for the development of speech. Vernix area is involved in speech processing and understanding language. So this is responsible for uh, speech processing and understanding the language. This is a very unique tissue which has been evolved for, uh, for speech and understanding. So, uh, the brain case in the man is largest uh, ranging from, as I have already mentioned, it can go even up to uh, 1600 cc sometimes and in the case of uh, the other great apes as i have mentioned there gorilla is just around 550 or so chimpanzee 400 orangutan so this is one of the fundamental difference in the brain because of the variation of the cranial capacity and speech Man is distinguished from apes mainly by this uh, ability of articulating speech, but, but some scientists believe that a rudimentary kind of language can be used by these great apes in terms of some vocal uh, voices, etc. The teeth. In the, in the case of uh, the smaller in size than those of apes, so the size of the uh, teeth, when you relatively compare with the uh, uh, great apes, uh, the size of the teeth in the man is uh, less. So, canines do not project forward beyond the level of other teeth. So, as I have shown in the previous projection here, the canine is extending uh, uh, more than the length of the other teeth in the jaw is one of the uh, features of apes, which is not present, which is the extension of canine doesn't happen in the case of man. That is one of the fundamental difference. Chewing motion is side to side and also up and down, known as rotatory motion. So, because this canine is not interlocking, our canine doesn't interlock. But in the case of apes, the canine, the maxillary canine interlock into the mandible and the mandible canine enters into the level of uh, maxilla. In this process, the jaw can be only uh, moved in one direction up and down it cannot rotate but 
our jaw we can rotate it sideways and up and down so because of this reason we have got a rotatory motion because there is no interlocking of canines but because of the interlocking of canines in the case of apes the rotatory motion is absent in the case of jaw is one of the fundamental difference dental arc uh, takes the shape of a parabola so uh, it forms an arc the way the tooth have been arranged uh, forms an arc for example this is a hominid a human being arrangement of teeth forms an arc but this formation of arc doesn't happen in the case of great apes and there is a space existing uh, this arrow mark known as a diastema which facilitates the lodging of the canine of the upper jaw and the diastema present in the upper jaw lodges the canine of the lower jaw this existence of diastema space lodging the canine of the other jaw is present in apes such kind of diastema is not present in the case of human beings that is one of the fundamental difference but when the dental formula is considered uh, both of us uh, have got uh, the same dental formula 2 1 2 3 2 so here two means the two incisors one canine two premolars and molars see this three premolar three molars two premolars one canine and two incisors so 2 1 2 3 is the dental formula of human beings and apes so here that is one of the fundamental difference here in the case of uh, in the case of the arrangement of teeth with the diastema in the case of apes and a very prominent uh, canine here uh, in in our case the canine is not so prominent and absence of diastema and a parabolic shape and they have got u shaped structure of a, a dental arrangement in apes a dental arc is u shaped size of the teeth are larger canines project beyond the level of other teeth due to this uh, nature canines of apes interlock when jaws are closed this arrangement prevents the lateral movement so because they are been locked they can't move the jaws sideways so they move only in vertical direction in the case of the nose nose is well developed in the case of man the root and bridge of the nose have a slightly marked elevation so what is having here, what is uh, what is the main fundamental difference in the case of root and uh, uh, fundamental difference in the case of nose of uh, uh, apes and uh, human beings is uh, for example see this nose we have a nose bridge here elevated nose bridge such kind of elevated nose bridge is not present in the case of apes so this is one of the fundamental difference there is a septum dividing the nostrils elevated septum such kind of elevated septum is not uh, present it is one of the fundamental uh, difference uh, um, in the case of uh, the nose the elevation at the root uh, and bridge is very little or absent in the case of uh, apes so the root and the bridge of the nose have a, a slightly marked elevation tip of the man has a thicker uh, bulb so what happens is we have this is considered as thicker fleshy uh, and having a cartilage base at the bulb uh, in the nose such kind of tip with fleshy tip is absent in the case of the nose of uh, great apes that is one of the fundamental difference in the case of uh, nose tip of the man has thick bulb the nasal wings are strongly developed so the nasal wings means so these are the nasal wings so on the either side of the septum this is a wing which clearly shows the nostrils such kind of a prominent bridge and a nasal wing 
is absent in the case of this nostril wing is not so prominent like human beings that is one of the fundamental difference uh, this is the root this is the uh, wing of this uh, nostril which is not uh, prominently present in the case of great apes Uh, in apes, nostrils are smaller and uh, generally pointed downwards, as you have observed. The elevation at the root and bridge is very little or absent. So, as you have observed, there is no nose bridge, the elevation is plus. Tip of the nose is lacking in apes. So, as we have the bulbous, fleshy, cartilaginous base here, um, apes doesn't have this. The cartilaginous portion of the nose is very wide, unlike man, and it is a little raised on the surface of the face. So, when you relatively compare on the surface of the face, the rise of the bridge, nose bridge, is less in apes, and it is flat and wide. And in the case of the lips are considered, we have a median furrow. In the case of the lips so here medial this is the medial furrow this kind of predominant medial furrow between the upper lip is present in human beings this medial furrow is absent and the lips are tight well organized whereas the lips of these great apes is so loose not as uh, organized in the case of uh, human beings Uh, the apes lips are thin and uh, the red portion of the lips are rarely seen when mouth is closed. The integumental lip has little quantity of fat. Integumentary system means the one which encompasses inside or the one which covers is the integumentary system. So uh, the lip is covering uh, the teeth inside the mouth. So a coverage by the lip. In the case of arms, in apes, the arms are greatly elongated. An adaptation to the habit of hanging and uh, walking in uh, branches. So, this process of brachiation, this is known as brachiation. So, hands have got the function of locomotion in the case of uh, apes. We don't have the function of locomotion as far as these hands are considered. So, because they have got a, a locomotory function, a holding purpose in the higher canopy, they need to be very strong. And the hands bear certain weight of the body when they are quadrupedal. We are bipedal. The whole weight of the body is on the legs. So, the, the legs need to be so strong. But in the case of... Uh, uh, but in the case of human beings, the hands are relatively, when they compare with uh, apes, are not as long as apes, not as strong as apes, because the function of locomotion is lost in the process of evolution, uh, in the case of the hands of uh, human beings, because of which their strength has decreased. Relatively, in the case of the legs, the legs strength has increased in the case of man so in apes the upper arms act as movable levers and hence the length of length is uh, short and in uh, man lower arm is movable le uh, lever and hence uh, shortened so here see this comparison in the case of apes the hand is so the forearm especially is so long but in the case of human beings the hand is very weak relatively because this is in this process of evolution according to, to these evolutionary theories the Darwin the Lamarca who have said which supports this where when you are using an organ it becomes so strong when you stop using them they slowly degenerate so the strength essential for the locomotion for the hands when you are a locomotory organism uh, when you are using 
hands for locomotion they need to be very strong but in the case of human beings the strength of the hands has been decreased because they have lost this function of locomotion the forearms of apes are stronger longer larger when compared to man uh, you can easily see this through this projection this kind of anatomical differences is because man has left arboreal habitat so previously our ancestors like monkey type of organisms or apes lived on these uh, canopy or trees so when we have st gradually started coming down from the canopy or the trees because of the change in the environment when the forest has converted into grasslands or because of any other reason when we have started moving on the ground when we have raised our body gradually when we have started using our legs only for locomotion gradually the size of the hands decreased the four limbs lost the function of locomotion so the size of the size and strength decreased this is one of the anatomical difference and the shape of uh, the rib cage in the case of humans it is barrel shaped in the case of apes it is conical and it is an uh, inverted cone like a structure this is one of the fundamental difference of uh, 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 between uh, apes and uh, man the rib cage is conical in the case of apes the rib cage is barrel shaped in the case of human beings this is another point where we can prominently rise in terms of the difference of anatomy the next one is the thumb which is responsible for all the all the material culture so when you relatively compare uh, the thumb here being projected to you the thumb relatively is distant apart from the rest of the fingers but for us the, when you relatively compare the distance between the uh, rest of the fingers and the thumb is less here in the case of apes the distance between the uh, fingers and the thumb is more so for a precision grip for example if you are holding a, a pen is a precision grip the thumb is pressing uh, the pen against the rest of the four fingers precisely you are able to hold a tool to aim something else is possible because of the thumb here the anatomical uh, uh, factor of the thumb is responsible for that this anatomical variation of thumb has led to a condition known as opposability of the thumb so you can bring your thumb opposite to the rest of the four fingers very easily which led to the precision grip so this is one of the major fundamental anatomical difference to compare and this thumb has got a very good cultural significance because of the precision grip which is responsible for designing extraordinary tools from the stone age to the civilization humans have an opposable thumb meaning that they are able to simultaneously flex abduct and uh, medially rotate the thumb so here the rotation of the thumb uh, or the movement of the thumb is possible because of its location to pull something else is very easy because of its or to hold something else is very easy because of its grip uh, the thumb gives so as to bring its tip in into opposition with the tip of any of the other uh, digits for a precise grip so this kind of uh, arrangement uh, makes an angle uh, the rotational angle is more from from this condition to this condition there is a rotating capability the angle of rotation of the thumb when you relatively compare with the rest of the apes uh, 
uh, is more in the case of uh, human beings. That is the main point here in this uh, projection. And apart from this, the amount of muscles being attached to the thumb is more in the case of uh, human beings. You have got out of the total amount of thumb, 39% of uh, muscle mass you have got in the human thumb, where it is only 20% in the case of uh, the apes. You can see the size of the thumb proportionately it is small, but here it is large and the amount of flesh being attached is more, giving more grip uh, to human beings, which has led to a kind of grip known as precision grip, which has led to manipulate many number of tools. Next, the difference in the case of this vertebral column. So, as I have mentioned, these vertebra, which are 33, the different bones, the 33 bones of this vertebra are being classified into this cervical, thoracic, lumbar and sacral. So here, in this uh, classification of this vertebra, in the case of humans, the vertebral column is vertical to the ground, making a 90 degrees angle with the ground. That is one of the fundamental difference. Where in the case of apes, uh, it is making a, uh, it is parallel to the ground. So that is one of the major difference. In the case of apes, it is parallel. In the case of uh, human beings, it is vertical. This, this is one of the fundamental difference. And the shape of the vertebral column is S-shaped in the case of uh, human beings. But in the case of uh, great apes, it is not making an S-shape. It is a bent arc-shaped, convex-shaped, uh, uh, curved structure. So here, to make the differences. So this is the fundamental difference here. In the case of human beings, it is S-shaped, but it is it has got only a single curve, a bow-shaped single curve vertebral column parallel to the ground and this is vertical to the ground. That is one of the uh, significant anatomical variation which is known as bipedal style and this is known as quadrupedal style. Bi means two. Moving on two legs. Quadripedal means using four arms. Quadri means four. When you are moving on four arms, it is known as quadripedal style. So, the, there is a convexity existing in the cervical uh, vertebra. See this. Cervical and uh, lumbar curves of the spine are concave. So here, see this cervical and lumbar are concave. So this, so here in this case, curves of the spine provides strength and balance, supporting the weight of the body. So this is not straight. This is an S shape because this is being designed in this manner by nature to uh, to bear the weight of the <coughs> body. One of the fundamental difference here is the upper cervical vertebra are thin. By the time you come down, they are becoming so thick because gradually by the time you reach at the bottom, the weight need to be bared by uh, the lower part of the vertebra is more. So to accommodate that, the strength width has been increased. Now, that is the reason why sometimes uh, the vertebral column is also being uh, described as conical. Among the quadrupeds, the pelvis may be like a bony cylinder flattened from the side to side. So, so th they are talking about this axis which is uh, where the pelvis is elongated, uh, the backbone is parallel to the ground. So this is one of the major anatomical variation. 
and uh, this is the vertebral column uh, this is how the vertebra are being uh, arranged the excessive breadth of the sacral part of the human ilium also helps in transmitting the whole body weight so what is happening here by the time it is coming down the width of the vertebral column is being broadened and the sacrum has further widened to bear the weight at the bottom of the vertebral column so this is also useful to you in general studies so the acetabulum lies in the middle of the ilium and ischium so here uh, acetabulum what do you mean by this uh, acetabulum acetabulum uh, is a concave structure here in the pelvic cartilage so this is more clear here right acetabulum this is the cavity this cavity is a cup shaped cavity and this cavity provides a ball and socket joint this is a socket into which a ball fits into so this is the ball femur femur head is a ball this ball fits into the socket so the location <clears throat> of this acetabulum to the pelvic girdle and the angle of the femur head articulating to the acetabulum is one of the major anatomical variation between man and apes so here in this case how this variation is existing so the acetabulum lies in the middle of the ilium and ischium so here the acetabulum is this is the one uh, ischium is the green one ilium is the red one this is being shown to you because these are uh, this seems to be a single bone when we don't differentiate in terms of color so these are bones different bones in the evolution they have been fused together into a single structure known as pelvic girdle so this pelvic girdle has a cavity on the either side this cavity is known as acetabulum a cup shaped structure which facilitates the articulation of uh, of the head of the femur so the location to make <clears throat> to make uh, the human beings erect than being quadrupedal being on to make them bipedal the location of the acetabulum has also been changed so how it has changed the acetabulum uh, the acetabulum lies in the middle of the ilium and ischium unlike those of uh, pongida means these are kind of monkeys uh, among whom the acetabulum is located well below so so here the location of this acetabulum is for well articulation for the femur head so because the angle of the uh, head of the femur when you relatively compare with the great apes and uh, man the human uh, head of the femur has got a larger angle than the angle of the femur head of uh, great apes this is responsible for changing the location of acetabulum for a bipedal locomotion which has even led to the change in the curved femur and the change in the angle of the uh, leg of great apes where we have we are able to make a straight leg where the apes have a bent knee because of this change in the curvature of the femur and the way the femur articulates with the pelvic girdle with a greater angle and a lesser angle in the case of uh, apes
So after understanding this, the sacrum is shorter and broader and the inlet of the pelvis forms a broad a bottomless basin which supports pelvic viscera. What is he saying is uh, which we need to describe. See this. The pelvis is another part of uh, the human skeleton where the human pelvis is short and thick. See this uh, ilium which is part of uh, uh, the pelvic girdle is thick, observe the ridge here and short and it is a basin like structure which facilitates a, a large embryo especially in the case of females. Where the gestation period of, uh, uh, of the human beings is having a more duration, the, the more the gestation period, the more evolved developed embryo uh, embryo development happens leading to the birth of a well-developed uh, child even before the birth. So this gives a greater advantage uh, in the process of uh, adaptation, development, etc. So this skeletal structure is responsible for a larger gestation period for more duration for the purpose of development which is responsible for uh, well successful living being in the world. This structure is responsible for that. Very strong pelvis providing a basin like cavity for a long gestation period and a, a larger well developed human being. So apart from this uh, uh, anatomically this is shorter relatively compared with apes, uh, stronger thicker it need to bear the weight of the whole body bipedal means two legs need to bear so this need to become so thick but in the case of quadrupedal the thickness of these uh, iliac crust is less than the thickness of the iliac crust of human pelvis so the reason behind it is uh, the weight of the animal in the case of the quadrupedal the weight is being shared by the four limbs because the 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 uh, the hands are also being used, uh, the four limbs uh, are also being used uh, for the purpose of uh, locomotion in the case of apes because of which the pelvis is not as strong as uh, human beings, the pelvis is elongated in apes, the pelvis is shorter, thicker, broader in uh, man, that is one of the fundamental difference in terms of size, elongation, thickness of pelvis. Location of uh, acetabulum. These are the main uh, points which we need to uh, which we need to understand here. Visra here implies that the kind of uh, organs existing in, in this cavity, like the uterus or any other uh, ovaries or uterus or any other uh, organs, the the digestive system, etc., the large intestines, exist in this uh, bowl, facilitating a larger uterus, especially because of which uh, even uh, the shape of the female uh, female pelvis uh, differs from uh, male which helps in identifying uh, uh, a male or a female skeleton in the case of uh, forensic investigations. So proportionately human pelvis exhibits much larger and thicker acetabular region than that of other primates. So acetabulum is thicker and larger to facilitate a larger head of the femur ball which is one of the unique different anatomical feature we have got. This also helps in transmitting and supporting the body weight uh, from the femur whose head articulated with it. So because it is thick, larger, when the surface, the physics principle is when the surface area is increasing, the pressure bearing, uh, uh, the pressure bearing, uh, uh, the weight on a cubic surface area decreases. So when the cavity is larger, the weight bearing capability gradually increases. The thickness, 
when it is small the weight bearing capability decreases so to facilitate this more weight bearing capability even though it is bipedal the cavity inside of the acetabulum has been increased to facilitate a larger head of the femur is one of the anatomical variation it was observed that uh, human pelvis had experienced a mosaic evolution so mosaic evolution means the meaning of the mosaic uh, here is uh, literally it is not even it happens in an irregular fashion where only certain portions have been developed evolved adopted and certain portions in between have not that is what uh, the meaning of the word mosaic evolution is so why this has been considered as mosaic evolution when pelvis is considered uh, so see this certain uh, portions are as weak as uh, the apes but certain portions of the pelvic girdle the iliac crust especially uh, has become very thick uh, and wide so the whole pelvis is not been adopted evolved uh, relatively but only certain parts at certain portions and certain locations of uh, the pelvis is been uh, award that is the reason why it is known as a, a mosaic it is compared to mosaic evolution the acetabular region is well adopted the iliac crust is well adopted um, that is the reason why this is been given as an example of a mosaic evolution next in the case of legs um as i have already mentioned uh, the longest bone the strongest bone is the thigh bone which is known as uh, the femur so here in this case this is the femur bone uh, as i have mentioned in the complete skeleton uh, which i have shown to you this is otherwise also known as the thigh bone so what uh, anatomical difference we have got here the femur of the apes is short thick and curved in man it is long slender and elongated so long slender and elongated it is shorter and curved so uh, see this this is curved in the case of apes this is straight in the case of uh, human beings the ridges uh, for muscle development in a uh, femur are greatly developed in uh, man so here than in the apes so what is happening here this is the ridge we are talking about this is the ridge running along the length of the femur forming an angle providing a grip for the muscles around the femur to attach itself such kind of a grip is not present in the case of femur of the apes it is smooth so the amount of muscles been attached to the bones is less so here these muscles are energy generators the, the blood in the muscles burn the glucose generating energy attaching taking bone as a support to lift so when there are more muscles the strength is more for providing more grip an angular structure running across the length of this femur this is known as linear aspera this ridge like structure is present in the case of human beings known as linear aspera this linear aspera is absent in the case of uh, in the case of uh, apes uh the ridge for muscle development in femur are greatly developed in ape in man than in the apes the linear aspera a rough ridge on the back side of the femur is characteristic of the man it has resulted due to a great development of the extensor muscle which plays an important part in erect posture and the bipedal gait gait means the way any an animal walks is known as gait so the muscle which provides extra strength to uh, extra strength for bipedal locomotion 
to the femur is the extensor muscle attached to the linear aspera of uh, the femur. In contrast to primates, human legs are lo <coughs> longer than arms. So, see here when he is comparing the proportionate length of uh, hands and legs, arms and legs. So, in the case of human beings, the length of the legs is much more relatively compared with the hands. But in the case of uh, apes, the length of the, the proportionate length when they relatively compare with the forelimbs and the hind limbs. In the case of uh, apes, the forelimbs are longer than the hind limbs. That is one of the fundamental difference we need to know. Next difference is the condyles are comparatively larger than those of other non-human primates. So here, here the condyles is, these are the structure, the bulbous uh, large structures when you relatively compare with the femur of apes and uh, uh, the femur of human beings. These, the condyles are prominent, large and protruding. So such is one of the difference uh, we are able to observe here between the anatomical variations here. Non-human primates, because of the fact that joints of the legs need to have uh, need to have large and stout structures for supporting the body weight. So what is happening here is uh, the whole body weight is felt on this femur. Whereas in the case of this femur, the rest of the three limbs share the weight, but here the only the other leg shares the weight because of which these condyles are very strong in the case of uh, human uh, femur and this describes about the angle human this is the human femur the angle is more because of which there you have got an erect posture the angle is less in the case of apes because of which it has not got an erect posture this is a quadrupedal angle this is a bipedal angle So the popliteal surface is also more concave. So this is the popliteal group. This popliteal group, in the case of uh, apes, the depth is very less. Here the depth is very more. So this might facilitate uh, the, the more angular movement of uh, the knee, which might have made the leg straight. Uh, that is one of the reason being attributed. Uh, next comes the foot. So when the foot is considered a, a very unique, uh, well differentiated foot uh, which we have got, one of the major difference is the great toe. The great toe is in alignment with the rest of the fingers here. But in the case of the great apes, the great toe is being deviated from the rest of the fingers, making an angle. This is one of the major difference. So this has happened because when man has acquired the bipedal locomotion, what happens is the whole weight is being transferred to the forelimbs. In this process, for a bipedal locomotion on the ground, where when he has lost the uh, need for holding the branches, this thumb uh, or the great toe uh, is in alignment uh, with the rest of the rest of the fingers uh, in the foot is one of the major fundamental difference. The great toe and its supporting uh, the metatarsals bones must be brought into the line of the long axis of the foot. So this is in line with the rest of the fingers is one of the striking feature and, or difference. And you relatively compare with the great apes and uh, man. So the big toe is no more opposable since the uh, since the foot as a whole is not a grasping organ. So we have lost the lost the capacity or the function to hold branches. 
it is no more a grasping organ so it has been evolved into a kind of a limb or a foot for bipedal locomotion on the ground the four lesser toes being no longer used for grasping now underwent a process of shortening and degeneration so gradually what happened is this uh, these bones in these fingers the muscles started degenerating see the size gradually being decreased in the case of man but these heel bones especially these calcaneus has been evolved much more stronger to bear the weight so these bones like uh, uh, the calcareous the talus especially the whole weight uh, of these bones the tibia and fibula transfers the weight directly on the talus then to the calcareous so these these bones the heel bones have become very strong when they relatively compare with the apes is one of the fundamental variation in the case of anatomy of the foot elongation and strengthening of calcaneum is another modification which we have discussed the talus became very strong here so this is how the bones of the foot are being classified see this uh, metacarpals these are metacarpals these bones together known as carpals talus cuboid calcareous known as car tarsals metatarsals and phalanges these are tarsals metatarsals and phalanges this is how the bones in broad we need not remember all these names just tarsals metatarsals and phalanges so just take the word tarsals from this these are together known as tarsals metatarsals and phalanges so another uh, anatomical variation which we need to know is uh, the medial arch so there is the whole foot is not landing on the ground there is an arch existing here this is acting as a kind of fulcrum where the foot based upon the shape acting as a fulcrum to transfer the transfer the whole weight from the heel to the toe providing a push for a, a good sprint is one of the anatomical variation where this kind of arch uh, present in the human beings in the case of the foot um, is not present in the rest of the great apes so this is how there is a lot of anatomical variations this is uh, the topic or uh, as far as uh, comparative anatomy is considered thank you